Mr. David Bowie there for you. Yeah. Not one of his own tracks, of course. No, it was it from the album Pin Ups. Didn't, no, we have with us uh, Sir Wanted. Is it Sir yet? Have they oh, noted no, it? I'm What's going not. on oh, in this country? Yes. Your Majesty, uh, wake up and smell the roses. We've got Ronnie Co- plain old Ronnie Corbett. No, <laughs> Sir yet. No. He should, oh, well, Lord, a Lordship. Would you accept a Lordship? I think I would. Yes, yes. I'll have a word. I'll that have sounds a word. nice, Lord Ronnie. Let's have a whip round. You can buy him, can't you? Let's have a whip round. <laughs> Let's buy Ronnie a it's Lordship. Been, not been proved yet. No, well, I don't know. I've just you can buy him. Ronnie Corbett is with us. How lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Lovely. Ronnie, you look so well. You look hale and hearty. Well, I have a lot of fresh air, you know, walking the dogs. Also, you know what? You, I would put you... Yeah, colour. I would put him on the top of the best dress list. It's a great outfit today. <laughs> Let's talk people through it. A, a, a light brown shoe. Yeah. Very nice slip on. A, a bright, a turquoise sock. Turquoise sock, yes. It's kind of a pale... It's, it's almost a tweed, but it's a kind of a light grey... Hopsack, kind of, light hop sack. Beautiful, you feel it, beautiful. It, it, that's the trousers. It, yes. The jacket has a slight window pane check, but it's very elegant. Yes, very right. Yes, right. Uh, in the <laughs> breast pocket, a yellow and blue handkerchief bringing out the accent in both the blue shirt and the turquoise sock. Yes. And then a yellow cardigan underneath. Very much... What what Pete Doherty wears these days. As well. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, looking great. What a great well, thank combo. You. Thank Who you. chooses the outfit? You yourself or your lady wife? No, I, cho- I choose them, yes. I, I think you've, I mean, over the years, you find you're picking things that go with other things you've already got, yeah. don't you? So you have a kind of colour feel. But you've always been, I've always thought you were an elegant dresser. Well, that's very kind. You always thank have you. been over the years. Yes, well, I've gone. When I started, I, I hate to say, keep saying I'm tiny now as I've welged out a yeah, bit. Yeah. But when you're tiny, it is important that you look you buy well the right decorated. Yes, especially back. Back in what was it, 1870 or something, when you were first buying outfits, mm. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, with a high bow bramble collar. Just before mm. the Franco-Prussian War, I remember <laughs> seeing a picture, an engraving of Ronnie Corbett, and I thought, what a well-dressed gentleman. <laughs> um, uh, Ronnie's with us, and we're delighted, of course, because he's, he's a charming and, and, and very, very uplifting presence. I always find. But the two Ronnies, there were some of the sketches out from Series One on DVD. Yes. Well, they've taken their time to get around to this. Haven't I they? know. Why have they taken so long? I would have thought it's been out years ago. Yes, I know. Uh, and they're also releasing at the same time DVDs of Sorry, so, so they're all, oh, maybe yes. they're realising the uh, a beautifully written the series. Sorry. I always enjoyed Sorry, well performed, but also a very well written comedy, a very very good show. I thought. Yes, I, um, I love doing it. Uh, the two Ronnies is great, though, of course. Um, and uh, which are the sketches? Do you know which ones they have on this first um, DVD out now? Uh, no, I, I, I should have done homework, watched it this morning, but I was watching the recording of your show last night. Oh, and cool. I, could, I can't really. I can you only apologise. Well, no, it's not. Uh, God bless you. Uh, this, OK, I see some on the back here. Among the highlights of the eight episodes uh, was a bald man at party sketch. I yes. used to love the party sketches. I used to dream, I used to watch them as a boy, of course, and I think, one day I will be invited to parties like that. <laughs> right? And I never have been. <laughs> it's, it's a constant course, source of pain to me. <laughs> you, but you were, of course, you were in one, of Oh, course. I was in a couple of episodes yes, of the you were in, an extra. when we did the, um, the, the pop evening with Ronnie being... Um, Once again, we're opening up yeah. a bit of a wound. Yeah. 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 What were you again? What? Well, they could me for the phone. You were one of... Wait, what? I did the countdown and I thought they'd ask me to be David Bowie and I was barely man enough. Oh. <laughs> the Barry Manilow lookalike. They, they <laughs> puffed out my hair and there's there. I was like, numbers. At 17, barely man enough. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for opening that up again. Uh, but I loved being there. It was great to see you guys working on stage and it was, uh, you know, I feel very, very excited that I was there for that and it was great fun to be there as well as to watch afterwards. Right. Because the shows were such a huge hit. I mean, the sort of figures you Well, it's you on there, they got. say 17 million yeah. people. Watching, but of course, in those days, there weren't the other. You only get that now if you're trying to save the planet. That's the only way you get that kind of an audience. (laughs) You you know, it's only for Live Eight and the big shows like that you get 17 million. Um, Did you enjoy the musical numbers as much as? I would have thought you might yeah, have Yeah, so it was terrific. Funnily enough, we, there was a bit of a milestone last week because Dick Bosborough um, uh, died last week who was with, uh, who wrote the original uh, version of that, which was um, Romeo and Juliet set to Sousa Marches. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he had this idea of doing big musical extravaganza yeah. and he wrote the short and fat minstrel show and he wrote it. So, <laughs> and... and, the, and and uh, it was a terrific ending for the show. Well, of it course. was a great ending, but you know, unlike so many shows trying to do that kind of thing, but very often they fall down because to sustain a musical number as a comedy number is, I think, a real it's a, a, it's a skill which is very hard to, to achieve. That's right. I mean, because many times you get the joke initially and then it's a bit tiresome. Uh, that's right. But you guys always found new ways of extending the joke. There was physical comedy going on, there was prop comedy going on, and there was also Cle- a great verbal play. Clever rhymes, right that's right. Wonderful costumes. Yeah. And uh, uh, end and, and of each week. Uh, 
a seven or eight minute big musical routine. Yeah, I doubt if we'll ever. See, I doubt if we'll ever see the same again. On, no, of course, on, the on huge TV. amount of money was spent yeah. on the show. When you look money and the, time, but also the, the time. The time, time that's yeah. right. Time mainly. Yeah. Did you enjoy this one? Did it have any of the uh, the running um, series <laughs> on that you used to do? It was a uh, Farley Park. Was it Harley? Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, tell what is on there. Hampton Wick. Hampton Wick is up there. Hampton Wick is my favourite one. With the delightful, beautiful. Shouldn't have started that. <laughs> no, 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 don't start if you finish. No, 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 I don't like that. I have to blame that. Surely you've learned that after your years in show business. I tell you what, well, give us a chance. We'll finish Ronnie off. Uh, well, that <laughs> started sentence after this. We'll find out who the lady was. It wasn't oh, Diana yeah. Dawes in that, was it? No, 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 no. no, no. Diana okay. Dawes was in one. She was in The Worm That Turns, I believe. In The Worm That Turns. Yes, that's, one I, good. that's the one I remember because I remember coming out in PVC and thinking, good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> I was about 11. I've never become her. <laughs> Mum, I'm about to bed early tonight, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put some music up. We'll find out who was yes, in that with the body. Darling, she was beautiful. It's a lovely sound. Who the Maccabees. Wow, we played this new we played them before. Yeah. Uh, we uh, realised there was a moment of epiphany, and we realised the name of the beautiful young actress that of Ronnie was quoting for was, was Madeline Smith. Madeline Smith. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful, buxom young wench. I seem to recall. Indeed, she was. I, I saw in an, a negligee in a vampire film once, and whoa. <laughs> That was, a, that was a look, wasn't it? <laughs> You've been very physical all morning, you know, on my oh, way up here. I've been hearing about... It's my age. I'm, I'm hitting puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about buttocks and thighs. Uh, and yes. Well, my buttocks are quite remarkable. That's I don't what know. I hear. Only from him, though. No What's one else that? is it. Well, I'm going to pick up a pen now. You can just... <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and, now, and now I'm going to sign my name. <laughs> if you hold that checkbook still, <laughs> we'll make it out of cash. <laughs> um... Uh, Ronnie, you you made any number of movies over the years. You were often, yeah. especially British movies. Yes. Bit. And uh, a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of um, spending some time with Ursula Andress. Oh, yes. Who, of course, was in the odd, quite odd, but but in a way wonderful first version of Casino Royale. That's right. Which, which I believe I, you were in as well. Absolutely. I played polo in that. And uh, at the t- directed by Ken... I think well, it had about seven or eight names attached. Seven or eight, yeah. that's right. It was... uh, but Ken, the English director, director of it, and um, at that time I was doing the nightclub, I was at Win- uh, Danny LaRue's, and I, I used to finish at Danny's, go home, quarter to two in the morning, two in the morning, go to bed, and, and then Anne would wake me up at six in the morning, and I'd say, is it the club or is it the film studio? And well, you often, feel, but what a great oh, period oh, in a way. Oh, was that when you were doing the cabaret? I saw a photograph recently, I think it was in the Telegraph magazine, we were mentioning the Telegraph early on, and they do a best, uh, they do a photograph, and they used to get thrown out into oh, the audience. No, that was at the Savoy. Yeah. When I, that was the end of Anne and I doing our double act, yes, I and I landed up on an old Charles Chancellor's, Spencer Churchill's <laughs> table, because the stage used to come up, you know, be <laughs> and they'd spin table you out off. Yes. And I, I remember when you said you thought that's a bit undignified. I might stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> landing, landing in someone's lap <laughs> at the end of the show. You think, oh, my God, we'll have a different ending. But I bet it was a big finish. We used to do a parody of "All I Need Now Is the Girl" from <laughs> Gypsy, yeah. and change "All I Need Now the Boy." And I was this atrociously dressed man in top hat, white tie, and tails. <laughs> and all the jacket used to come apart with Velcro: <laughs> the sleeves, the front, the tail. Well, wow, you, you got a lot for your money when you were well, in show in those days. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone walks on and says five minutes a gag. That's it. <laughs> You're being thrown around. You're just around. torn off. A, yes, absolutely. Wow. Uh, uh, but that sort of uh, theatre and that kind of cabaret doesn't really exist anymore, does no, it? No, that's right. I suppose you see I mean, maybe on cruises, but it was like real supper club and yeah. you'd go and have a meal. Irving Davis see. dancers, a proper big band, and a, and a star act. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's right. It's like the West End was peopled with clubs like that. It's a shame, though. Winston, Stanley Rouge, Talk of the Town, Edmund Did Rossi. Because Anthony Newley started in that kind of arena, didn't he? That's right. That's right. Right. Did you ever encounter a performer called John Cranko? Yes, who did a, a, a review called Cranks, Cranks where Tony to sang his first yeah. song. Yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah w- at the Watergate Theatre, and I saw it. Somewhere I've got the album on vinyl of Cranks. My God, it and with Annie there. Ross probably in it? Was I it? believe it was Annie yes. Ross, and poor old Mr Cranko was caught uh, in an impertune moment in a gentleman's lavatory. You know, you're not back to buttocks again. I'm not <laughs> personally, but I think he was. <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, that was a hard thing to bounce back from, of course. Oh, yes, of course it was. Yeah. Several distinguished people at that stage, yes, from... There. But John Cranko, wonderful, yeah. Yeah, I bet he was a great performer. Did you go and see many of the, the uh, American stars when they came over? Because they used to come over, like well, Judy Garland. And... Yes, I saw them all. Garland, Benny, uh, Bob Hope. So you saw Jack Benny perform like Yes, oh. Danny Kaye, Mickey Rooney. And uh, who, what are your fondest memories? Who were the better performers, do you think? Well, Jack Benny is, was always formidable. But, of course, in those days, you see, they, did, they only did the whole of the second half of the show. Uh, so they went on all night. And they did the second half of the show... And they always brought 
a couple of people with them. Yes, uh, a couple uh, of other performers. Other performers, Phil Harris, or and he would do a bit, or Rochester. Um, so it was like you had a review show right there. In the second half, yeah, that's yeah. right. Did you um, ever see, let me ask you about some other performers at Peter, because you travelled the world, of course. So yes. Did you ever see Elvis perform live? Or never saw Elvis. Elvis, yeah. no. Um, never, I never saw Elvis. Uh, I, I know the story about Tom Jones uh, playing Las Vegas and meeting Elvis, and Elvis coming to see Tom Jones, and Tom Jones making the silly error of telling the audience that Elvis was in the back. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of his show, they were all. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I never saw Elvis. No, I don't. Uh, Sinatra, of course, a lot live. I mean, there were great days. I mean, Jack Benny was wonderful. I would love to have seen Jack Benny live. I oh. thought, you know, it's not necessarily comparable, but I saw Jerry Seinfeld live recently. Oh, he, no, he, he would be formidable. one of the best comedians I've ever seen uh, live on stage. Uh, what are you doing now? Because every because so often you turn up in very modern shows. You're one of these performers who obviously uh, are a great talent yourself, but people haven't forgotten you. And you, I know younger guys write stuff and they seek you out. Yes. Um, I, I saw you in extras, of course. Yes, that was... Very, very revealing aspects <laughs> of your personal life there. Come on <laughs> Choice little bit. I'm glad to know that the spelling rehab has sorted you out. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I remember hearing that the, I think Rob Bryden and David Williams are writing something. With yes, you in Rob and David, um, it is said, are writing. They've talked about it a lot, but it's not <laughs> happened yet. They keep talking about it, and I, yes. I keep looking forward to seeing it, yes, but it's not I, happened. I keep looking forward to doing it. Well, too. I'm seeing Rob next week. I'll tell him to get a move on. Right, very good. Let's put another bit of music. Do we? You know what? Look, what are you going to play some Elvis? I had some Elvis queued up, and I, I was listening to it in the week, and I, I love his version of Wild in the Country, which is just. Um, okay, he's just. So we're playing this just because none of us got to see him live, so we can all feel bad now, is it? <laughs> well, okay. well, all right. Bung him on, then. Who is this, Elvis? Yes. The great Elvis. That's a great sound. And what a voice. Well, fantastic. Um, Mr. Ronnie Corbett is with us. Uh, on Monday, you can go out to the shops or you can get it uh, delivered to your house. If you do the online shopping, you can get the two Ronnie's. Series 1 is released on DVD at last. Uh, I'm going to take this home and watch it with the children because uh, they need to be exposed to the two of you in your very prime. But I'm excited to hear that um, Mr. Corbett is appearing on one of my favourite shows on the BBC tomorrow. Antique Roadshow, that's right. How much did they value at you at? <laughs> <laughs> but they couldn't quite determine Did what Adam, age Adam queued up with you in a little box and said, here you go, well, I've, I've had this for a bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm attached, but for the right price, I'll let him go. <laughs> no, it's about, you know, somebody um, uh, sold um, on eBay Ronnie's handwritten version of Four Candles. I didn't know that. Yes. No. Um, and, uh, and it was it authentic? It, it was authenticated, authentic. so they had me along to look at it. Yeah, it was how, how much did it fetch on eBay? I don't know what. I don't, I don't know eBay. No, a lady said she had... It's a come to her hands, right, a bit of a got... mystery, but that's what it's well, about tomorrow. I, I have in my possession uh, the um, music with handwritten notes from two to, of uh, Frankie Howard of um, Three Little Fishes. Oh, my that God. I've ordered a, there used to be a charity thing. I think you were involved called the Dead Comic Society. Oh, yes, I was. Oh, putting plaques yes, up yes. at various I've places. I've not joined and... it yet, but uh, I know no, what no, you mean. No, no, please say. I'm a syndicate but I, member. But I bought that in a hat once worn, worn by Sid James, which is now sitting in a cupboard somewhere. <laughs> 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 doesn't doesn't get to see the air a lot. <laughs> um, but so that's a, what a nice thing, and what a lovely show the Antiques Roadshow is. Oh, isn't it? Lovely, yeah, gosh, well, and Michael Aspel is excellent. So it's lovely. I mean, you know, you come to a certain age when you settle down and you think, I can't do anything on a Sunday afternoon. The road shows on, <laughs> and you hear that music, and you see the old clock coming over the hill, and you think, That's it, I'm good for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> they've changed the front bit, haven't they? The credits well, a bit. Well, yeah, they've made it a bit too modern, if you don't <laughs> <want to laughs> <answer. laughs> <laughs> Bit too, they get a bit too flash. Um, uh, Ronnie, how lovely to see you again. Well, thank, thank you, you so for asking me. I hope very much we do finally get to see this project that Mr. Yes. Bryan and Mr. Williams claim to have created for you. Yeah. And good luck with the success of the DVD of the two one is I know you probably barely see a penny yourself but no. uh, I, I hope it's uh, there's a copy in every household before long because thank you very much it. lovely to see you again thank you Jonathan thank Bye. you for listening I hope you can join us again next week 88 to 91 FM this is Radio 2 from the BBC